Lakshman Achusen, uh, Managing Director of the Economic Cycle Research Institute, or ECRI, providing cyclical forecasts and research to asset managers and companies and policymakers. Thanks for joining us. I know it's a holiday Thank week, you. so we appreciate yeah. it. Glad to be here. So you're looking at all the data this morning, especially when you look at the jobless claims, the pending home sales, uh, both better than, than many people had expected. So, so how do you view all the figures we're getting? Well, it, I mean, first and foremost, no new recession. It was only a couple of weeks, maybe two months ago, people were double dip this, double dip that. Mm -hmm. You know, this really should put the nail in that coffin. And when you look at forward-looking data, initial claims is slightly forward-looking. It's a short leading indicator of the economy. Um, we are, uh, that's very consistent with what we expect to be a revival in economic growth in early spring. Mm -hmm. uh, so 2011 is going to be the time when the slowdown that the economy has been going through since mid-2010 draws to a close and we start to revive, the okay. growth starts to turn up. What will that uh, reviving feel like? What will it mean for the people that have been out of work for months and even years? Well, for the ones that have been out of work months, it's going to mean better job prospects. For the ones that have been out of work for years, the so-called long duration unemployed, long term right. unemployed, they're, they're, they may be having trouble getting jobs for more structural as opposed to cyclical reasons. So a, a, a cyclical revival can help deal with cyclical unemployment, which is maybe 40 something percent of the uh, unemployed. Uh, but the other some 40 something percent of the unemployed, and there's a little lost in the middle, but the other 40 or so percent unemployed, which are long duration unemployed, they may be unemployed for more structural reasons that won't be fixed by a revival in growth, where there's a mismatch of skills. I was just going to say, so you're talking about that mismatch of skills, but with many of the people that were working in construction, those jobs may not come back. So how, how do we create opportunities? Um, we are, the private sector will do that over time. Okay, it takes a long expansion to have the private sector uh, use up all the people whose skills match mm -hmm. and then turn to those who don't and retrain them. And so we saw that happen in the 1990s, for example, uh, where the long duration unemployment really fell to pretty low. But here, um, we're only a couple years into an expansion. We would need an expansion three, four times as long as what we've had mm -hmm. in order to get at those long duration unemployed. And I wouldn't hold my breath for that. Uh, also, we're learning this morning as we got mm -hmm. the economic reports, U.S. business is expanding this month to the <coughs> fastest pace we've seen in two decades. But does it seem really fast considering how we've been trudging along? Well, you know, there's a real disconnect. You, you see GDP, we've, we've made back well over 80%, 85% of the GDP that we lost. We've only pulled back about 10% of the private sector jobs that we lost. So we're producing so much more with just a fraction of, of, of the jobs being replaced. Mm -hmm. And um, businesses here are having to make tough decisions. If they want to maintain market share, they're going to have to pull in uh, employees. This snowstorm was a great example. The, mm -hmm. the airlines had cut so far, they didn't have enough people to answer the phones. Why behind the curve? Well, um, just, I mean, you don't have to look that far. At the beginning of 2010, uh, the economy was uh, poised for a downturn. Mm -hmm. That was clearly evident if you look at good leading indexes, that the spurt of recovery out of recession was going to throttle back. And the Fed wanted to talk about exit strategy all day long. They were tr trotting out everybody saying, we're getting ready to tamp on the brakes. Then the slowdown arrives, and they have to do a 180 degree turn, and they go into QE2. Now, oh my gosh, there's QE, you know, the, the slowdown is here. This is, it must mean a double dip risk. This is all the stuff you heard over the summer. The market took a big hit uh, from all of this. And um, there's no double dip. There's no recession. And you it's said totally... that back in October that there was no double dip. Yeah, back in October, it was easy to, we could rule it out. Mm -hmm. And the fact that there's a slowdown following a spurt uh, out of recession is totally normal. And they were acting, I think they're, they seem surprised by really normal business cycle dynamics. So here we have in the leading indicators since October, I mean, they've been getting stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, just last week, they're going positive growth rates. Uh, so we're, we're seeing a clear and imminent revival in growth. However, um, policymakers are saying, insisting that if we do not take out insurance, there will be a double dip. They're wrong. 
they, they are, these indicators, these leading indicators, absolutely rebut that. It, it's not that the, these policy uh, stimulus won't do anything, but it's going to be icing on the cake. There's already a cake there that these guys are blind to. Okay. Well, why is there an apparent disconnect? Why? You know, I think they're just looking at the same old models that drove us, that kept them behind the curve in 2008. Okay, they were they were poised to raise rates six months inside of a recession. They were telling everybody we're going to raise rates mm -hmm. by 50%. Mm -hmm. Back in 03, this is the one that should be bothersome today. Right now, seems kind of like 2002, 2003. There's a fear of deflation. There might be a double dip. Therefore, we have to keep our foot on the gas. That's what they were doing in 02, 03, and uh, that's what they're doing right now. And 0203, uh, I, I, I can't assert that that's why there was a housing bubble, but I think low interest rates played a role. Let's let's agree on that. <laughs> and 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 so when you make an outsized policy effort, and here we're in brand new territory with mm -hmm. QE2 with trillions of dollars. Um, I submit that this is going to introduce instability, not stability to our economic future. A, a moment ago you were talking about uh, the disconnect and looking at historical data. Yeah. So is it different this time or is this well, the same old no, same old? No, I think it's same old same old. <laughs> I think it, but you have to you have to you have to look at the right textbooks, the ones that go pre-depression, mm -hmm. when the business cycle was very much alive and well, they were but there were jungle variety booms and busts and the sequences of events that we see at, turn, at studying recessions, all I do for 20 years is study recessions, mm -hmm. my mentor and his mentor. So we got three generations of doing this where certain things happen in sequence. We came out of recession, we forecast the end of recession in June, uh, in April of 09, we said, hey, it's gonna end by the summer. It mm -hmm. did. Mm -hmm. You normally have a spurt out of, uh, a spurt of growth out of the recession and you off you mathematically you have to throttle back you can't just keep going you go to the moon so growth throttles back in 2010 and the leading indicators are pointing to a revival and here it seems unbelievable i think policymakers just like regular people are 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 stuck in this giant era of pessimism that comes in the wake of a big recession or a big financial crisis. And that is exactly the wrong thing to do. A moment ago, you were also talking about the historically low interest rates yeah. for housing seven years ago, eight years yeah. ago. With the mortgage rates now ticking back up ever so slightly, we're at the seven yeah. month high right now. A good thing then? Well, it's a good thing because it's showing that there's some action, there's mm -hmm. some demand. Uh, I, I suspect the Fed will come in and try to push that back down, mm -hmm. right? Because they're they're saying with QE2 that they're going to operate in different aspects of the of the Treasury market. But so you're going to have some 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 buffeting there. They have a lot of money left to spend, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and this is coming on top of a revival that's already there. Mar I, I want to make something very clear: the revival in the economy was going to happen without QE2. Now I guarantee you everybody will take credit for the revival. It will be their policy, be it the Fed or Washington or this party or that party. Everybody will say that they did it. It was going to happen anyway. <laughs> so we're looking at our revival. It's a yes. very, very slow revival. Well, it's, it's, it's still in front of us. Certainly. But, yeah. but when you look to the Asia Pacific region, you're saying there could be some real danger. There are some real uh, uh, vulnerable points right now. Yeah. So what could happen to the United States economy then? Well, U.S., you, with, one, with the leading indicators in the U.S. in a revival the way they are, they're locked on a revival track. Mm -hmm. uh, you can have uh, unexpected events, something in Europe, something in Asia, in terms of economic or financial or even geopolitical events that won't knock us into recession again because we're not vulnerable. But it's the, it's the developed economies uh, in Asia, maybe Japan, uh, Korea that are vulnerable here. Mm -hmm. um, you know, the emerging markets are still uh, have a growing at a good clip, but it's some of these developing markets that are having some trouble uh, because they just weren't able to levitate enough uh, in the early stage of the recovery. I got to wrap up the conversation right. just quickly, though. Yep. Everybody's making resolutions yeah. right now. What's yeah. the financial resolution then? I, I would manage the cycle yourself. Don't wait okay. for the Fed to do it. Just look at some good leading indicators. All right, Lakshman, real pleasure. Right. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank have a happy you. new year, too. You too.